everybody. All roads do lead to Poland, and they've led you to our show this week. I want to thank you for watching. I think it's like the 85th or 86th show we've done since the war in Ukraine started. But I've never done a more interesting, had a more interesting guest than the one I have today. And I can tell you, after seeing his film in the Warsaw Film Festival, well, the film that he's uh, the uh, main figure in, uh, along with some Ukrainian orphans uh, that he has managed to bring out of the country, 300 of them and more, uh, since the war began. Uh, those are the two stars. Uh, I'd like to uh, introduce you to George Ignat here in the studio. George, what a pleasure. I'm going to shake your hand. Yes. It's good to have you in the hey, studio. Hey, good yeah. to, yeah. Good Thank to you have you so in the much. studio. Thank you so much for your invitation. Yeah. Will. I was blown away by your film, actually. I, I, I used to write about film for about 10 years for Variety, uh, the magazine out of Hollywood. I was correspondent mm -hmm. in, in Poland uh, during this time. I also wrote about some other countries. That, but uh, 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 so my speciality was film, and I love films. And I love documentaries. I've made a few myself. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, including one about death row in Texas. Um, so uh, when, I, when I see a documentary, I always look for some original theme, for a subject that uh, I think the, the, uh, will resonate with the audience and will have a lasting appeal over time. And I think you've created that sort of film with your team, uh, with the director Andy... Didway. Didway. And Andy, Andy Didway. Yeah. Andy Didway and Michael Bollock. And is the producer. The producer, which yeah. is a, yeah. the, the director also, like the executive director, which is a Emmy Award winner, like lots of uh, stuff he won so far. So I was fortunate to be able to work with such team yeah. and such professionals to come down to Romania to make a film about, in the end, you know, we, 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 we were just nobody in the middle of nowhere. If you will come to Romania to see where our organization's headquarters are, you'll see we are in an open field. So if you invite me, I'll come. Yes, definitely. You're <laughs> okay. welcome anytime. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, we, we're just surrounded by corn, and our headquarters are in uh, uh, next to a farm. So the neighbors are like 500 uh, cows, and the rest is all corn. So to have a team of professionals at this level to come all the way to Romania mm. to do this film that you saw at the festival is just, uh, it's just, you know, it's a miracle for us, and we are thankful to God for for such an opportunity. As I was talking to you before the show, there are so many people in the world doing great things and great work. Not many people have the chance to put that on screen, you see. So we are, you know, all quite yeah, I think, blessed. I, I think that's true. And uh, I mean, it's obviously true, but it's, it's a good point to emphasize because what your film does is it's emblematic. It represents uh, the work of so many other people who don't have a film. That's a very good point, And it's good of you to say it. Um, what's the film about, generally? And oh, let's say what it's called first. First, uh, it's called The Crossing. Consequences of the truth. Of the, the crossing. Truth. Consequences of, of the, the truth. truth. Yes. Um, what's it basically about? So the film is about. Tell, tell us how it began. Actually, the project. The what project, it started with. Uh, you know, I was in Romania, doing all this work, running this organization that I called five, five years ago, almost five years ago. I called it Fight for Freedom. Okay. Um, and then we had these friends in the United States that they were f film producers. And they heard about my story being an athlete and then um, have my change, uh, my life changed and turn around meeting Christ, become a Christian, and now doing a lot of work to help the society, to help inmates coming outside from prison, to reintegrate the society. You've been effectively doing a prison ministry, prison if ministry you will, and a homeless, sort of lay ho ministry. Homeless people yeah. also. We were taking yeah. care of homeless people. So they heard about this. They said, oh, that would be great to make a 20 minutes film about this guy. Sure. So they come down to Romania. By this time, the war in Ukraine started. And I, with Fight for Freedom team, with my team, we got involved from the first day, 24 February 2022. We were at the Siret border. It's the biggest border between Romania and Ukraine. And we found, you know, mm -hmm. what we found, it was crazy. You know, hundreds of thousands of people rushing from Ukraine to Romania. And we ended up there, you know, it was, it was quite late afternoon. Lights were shut off. 
uh, lots of people, children sc screaming and crying, um, uh, snowing. Uh, so you have people there staying for 40, 72 hours in a queue, just standing, like no place to, to sleep, no place. So, so it was awful. So we said, okay, how can we help? So we went there first time with like 300 sandwiches, which we ran out of immediately. And then we understood it's not about sandwiches. It's not about food. It's much more than that. These people need a place to sleep and they need constant care mm -hmm. and shelter. So we opened up, we had at that point two centers uh, nearby the border, because we live close in Suchava city, close to the Ukrainian border. We had two centers, we opened up the doors and we put mattresses everywhere and we start to receiving um, Ukrainian refugees. Uh, in the next few days, we put a big tent close to the border because we understood these people are freezing for days in between borders until they are able to cross. And then they will stay for hours waiting for buses, for, you know, different ways of moving forward. Uh, and then we had we put in place this big tent, Fight for Freedom White tent. It was quite known and because, uh, you know, it was warm. We had this warming things inside and sandwiches and hot soup. And so we received this in a corner there, a place for, for the kids to play. Um, so, you know, we started then a distribution um, Project. I think it was the 27th of February, three days into the war, when I lead, okay. the, I yeah. lead the first. Are, is your home location close to the border? Or? 40 kilometers away. Yeah. Okay. So you're and right our there. headquarters and our warehouse and everything. That's lucky. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we. Uh, well, or is it luck? We'll find out. We'll <laughs> find out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I lead the first convoy of 12 uh, uh, box trucks and vans with food and yeah, sure. humanitarian aid on the 27th. So the war started on the 24th. We went in Ukraine on the 27th. Mm -hmm. I remember nobody was getting, we were the only cars driving that. Everybody was rushing to the other side. Mm -hmm. And we were the only cars to, to drive going that way. Going forward to the border. Through the border, through the Ukraine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, going to, into Ukraine. Yeah. And then <coughs> the following day and so on. And right now we have an estimate, our distribution project delivers seven to 10,000 packages food packages every single week inside mm -hmm. Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So, uh, And these are like seven day food packages? Yes. You were telling yes, me. Yes, yeah, yes. Before. So yeah. around 40 to 45,000 people get a food package every month from Fight for Freedom still. So we have an estimate of feeding more than 1 million plus 1 million people inside Ukraine since the war started, which, which is, is big and is great. And it's a miracle itself for us again to, to, to start with, because we, 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 we were not experienced in this matters, Will. We have yeah. got peace in Europe for what, 70 years, 75 years. There was no, no war. We had no experience on, on you well, know. Now, And now we've got the other war in Israel, so it's very odd time. It's very unfortunate, and I yeah. think it's getting worse and worse. Yeah. So, yeah, we need to pray. Yeah. And, and trust that God will, will cool things down. Otherwise, you know, we can look back in the history and just we can imagine what I what fear that happen. we don't have a little bit of higher power looking after us. There's no telling what may happen. Yeah. But uh, that's another subject. Let's concentrate on your film. Yep. Uh, and it's beginnings. Uh, so these guys came down. And all of this is in your film. This sort yeah, of stuff yeah, is in your film. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And so if I got this right, Andrew, Andy Dubway, yeah. had the idea to make a short film about you and your life, which we'll get to in the second part of the, yeah. of the uh, uh, and explore in a, in a deeper way in the second part of the show after the break. But Andrew said, gosh, this is an interesting story about a guy who was a fighter who had this transformation. You didn't become necessarily a pacifist because you still train and all that. Yeah. but." you felt you had to go a different direction. Why you had to go a different direction is in the film. Yeah. And it is absolutely compelling. It's one of the main reasons. I might, I'll tell the, the folks this. Uh, everyone who watches this film at a certain point in that film is going to look into their own soul, into their own experience, and say, would I have been able to do what you, George, did? Every person who watches that film is going to ask that question, and they're, mm. it's going to be with them long after they watch that film, because I know it is with me, and mm. I think I'm pretty much like everyone else in this way. So yeah. uh, that, the, the central question at the core of the film is uh, what 
is, is one reason, compelling reason to see this film. The other reason to see this film is because of your personal story and the, tra the transformation in your, uh, in your life, but also how, if you hadn't had that transformation, that moment on the road to Damascus, like Saul, that... Everybody needs that. Yes. We, and you never know when, when it's well, going to come. Yeah. But we, we should want yeah. it to happen in you our lives. You have to be open to it. Exactly. You have to be open to it. Really. And then that is what allowed you to be in the right place. You had the organization in place 40 kilometers from the border yeah. when this thing happened. Yeah. Now, is it an accident? Jung, uh, the philosopher Jung and the psychologist would say it's a synchronicity, a meaningful coincidence, mm. George, that you went through all these things so that you could be there and have at the right place at the right time. And one of the great uh, humanitarian cri crisis points uh, since World War II, perhaps the biggest, certainly the biggest in Europe. In Europe, yeah. 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 Millions of people crossing, Ping, yeah. Romania and Poland particularly. Yep. Uh, I think there were eight million through Poland. It's yeah. hard to keep track, but a lot. And a couple of million or so Romania, through yeah. Romania. Yeah. 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 And, and people hiding out. Here's the other thing people may not realize, but we covered this uh, during this time, that people went to those mountains, and your nickname is the Carpathian Bear, yeah, yeah. because of your fighting uh, career. Background, yeah. yeah, fighting Greco-Roman wrestler. Yeah. Greco-Roman wrestling champion of Romania for 10 times, mm -hmm. been in an Olympic team for seven years, mm -hmm. international champion, and uh, so on. Also, Sambo, it's a, a, a Eastern sport, I would call it. Mm -hmm. uh, combat, very tough sport. Mm -hmm. Sambo combat and Sambo sportive. I'm two-time Romanian uh, national champion mm -hmm. and um, bronze medalist in the European Championship. Um, Mm, MMA fighter, mm -hmm. uh, won eight fights, uh, I'm 8 and 0, uh, zero losses, and he's going to stay like that because I'm not going to fight anymore, so he can't change. Thank you for telling <laughs> It's a good point. You're not going to fight anymore, but you still train and you have your own gymnasiums, uh, or yeah, at least one, gym, yeah, that, yeah, where you train yeah. people. Um, and you still have... Uh, you still have your uh, your eye on the sport, but you're not a participant uh, in, in matches anymore. Not anymore. I yeah. think to participate in competitions, especially the highest level, you have to really train. So I got so much on my plate right now. It would be so difficult to to train to compete. But I train to keep myself in shape. Cool. Train to be able to to run. I believe sports plays in in a, a, a an immense role. I mean, people if people could just know how important is the physical movement, like doing sport. Gosh, I think yeah. the gyms would be full. They will have to open up more gyms. How much I, it helps psychologically yeah. and everything. Like my work with the Ukraine. Uh, with the, we, we are, we, we've been in Turkey when the, the earthquake hit. Uh, it's not mentioned in the film, but we were there to help. We went twice. Our team went twice in Turkey too. So we try to 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 be present there where where there, there is a need. But uh, coming to you know where the the strength comes from and and everything is, I believe sports plays an important role. But I believe faith is even important than than sports and anything else. So faith. Faith in God, yeah. yeah. Faith in God. That's where, that's where, so, um, you know, people are wondering, like, how, where does the energy come from? Yeah. You know, in the first month of the war, I was sleeping three, four hours max at night mm -hmm. and go back to the border. I could not afford to sleep more, Will, mm -hmm. because I would wake up, I was in my bedroom, warm and nice. I would look at the window, it was snowing, and I, I, I knew there were thousands of people, tens of thousands stuck there between borders in between some fences like animals for 28 48 hours moms kids old people so i will tell you this story we were having i don't know 15 buses with help we were driving towards ukraine and then we stopped between the borders for the, the, the document control and then you have these two fences and you have massive amount of people in between them, right? Trying mm -hmm. to get, and they there, and we ask, you know, for how long you here? And some, some were for 30 hours, 36 hours, and it was awful, freezing, like, and we had one full bus with blankets. So I was like, they were freezing, children were like, and I went to the, the, to the custom 
main guy there and I said, listen, we have some blankets we need to take to Ukraine, but these people are freezing here. Do we allow this to, to, to just, you know, throw over the fence some of these blankets? The people were waiting on the other yeah, side. Yeah, on the other side. Yeah. And he was like, I don't know what to say. Let me ask my superior. He makes some phone calls. He said, yes. So we emptied the bus there. <laughs> there were hundreds of blankets that were left there at the border. And hmm. what we asked them, we said, as soon as you step out and you get in Romania, please give the blanket back to the people still in queue. I just, from hand to hand, make sure those blankets are... Just will, keep will them right there on the border. <laughs> exactly. And, and for the people who need them coming to, up to and you, waiting. To use them. Yeah. Yeah. They were so happy. I could, you know, yeah. I, I can even see my, uh, right now this mom with three kids <laughs> that so fast she... Put the, she rubbed them like a, like a kebab, <laughs> all, all, all three of them in one of these big blankets, and she was so grateful, so happy. So the, the thing is that we, we, in Europe, in 2022, like it was, in 2023, we, we should not have such situation, man. Mm -hmm. We have, you know, there, there, those things are sh shouldn't happen nowhere in the world, but especially in Europe, because we have a, such a... a, such a uh, good uh, feeling about ourselves and such a good opinion well, about we, ourselves. We, 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 Europeans, we should have learned we, the lessons of the past because we had two wars yes. in Europe uh, and we should have we learned should, those lessons. We should. And, uh, Whoever well, doesn't learn perhaps from the we past. Have, but perhaps the Russians haven't. Because yeah. The problem is dictators. And freedom, the name of your organization, Fight for Freedom. Yeah. You see, I think the lack of freedom uh, uh, is probably the main point here. Yes. Yeah, and th that means the lack of freedom for the for the Russian people in this case I'm, has led to so, this. So when it comes to 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 the polit political uh, side of the things, mm -hmm. we as an organization we decided to be very neutral, Good. which I believe is is very fair. You must be. Yes, because yeah. if for example tomorrow, and people ask us many times, will you do the same for other countries? And I said, if tomorrow something happened, we will have Russian civilians or Belarusian civilians coming mm. over, mm. being hungry, being, you know, freezing and all that. We will do the very same thing. Sure. It doesn't matter if they come from Cuba, from North Korea, from China, from anywhere in the world. Russia, very well, everybody who is a victim, you know, any suffering is welcome to be treated very equally and very warm and very kindly by Fight for Freedom. Uh, volunteer staff and so on. So this is why we, we yes, everybody can. It's an ecumenical organization in this you, sense. You can call it in this sense. Yeah, in yeah. this sense. Yeah. I mean, it's usually yeah. a religious term. But we don't, we don't care yeah. what religion you are or yeah. whatever orientation, this and that. We don't care. Color skin, no way. Mm -hmm. We love people. This is why we're there to help people. And it literally, is is each each one of us uh, decisions, you know. But, but we're there to, to, to show love, to show support, to provide the, the, the very uh, things that can make a life a little bit more comfortable and a normal life, like, you know, food, hot food and shelter and, and those things. And we don't care about political views and any other thing. We're there to help, to show the love of Christ to the people, because we do believe and we know that, that Christ loved everybody, everybody. You know, and there is this saying uh, 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 that, you know, God and Christ um, hates the sin, but he loves the sinner, mm -hmm. which is very beautiful because, yes, I do believe that, that, that God, you know, hates the sin, but then each one of us, we create in his image. And I do believe with all my heart because I've seen what he's done in my life, how he picked me up. You know, besides sport, professional sport and accomplishments in sport and all this, I have done some stupid things too. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in the yeah. second half. Okay. I'm, going to give, okay. I'm going to ask you some questions so, and, and let you... You know, yeah. talk about that because, but I want to build up the the, yeah, yeah. the suspense a little yeah. bit um, uh, because it's worth waiting for. But also, I want to talk a little bit more uh, and give the film some justice. So they came over and they did a short film. They, they were going to do a short over, film about no, you. They came over thinking yeah. we should do a short film. So they, they they came over and they said, you know, this can uh, be a 20 minutes film. And then they filmed for a day and they said we should go up to 40 minutes. Right, so they film for two more days. You got to film forty minutes to be to be uh, up for an Oscar. It's got to be forty minutes long at minutes, least. Yeah. That's the minimum. Yeah, but they were they were thinking for a short thing, right? Yeah, sure. So they they filmed two more days and they said, man, this should be somewhere between 60 and 90 minutes. 
And then I will just, you know, driving them to different projects that we do, because we work with homeless people. We work with the Roma community children in Romania. Yeah, sure. We do after school and we feed them. We work with different, different projects. And they were like, wow, it's so much. At some point they say, no, 90 minutes, 100% 90 minutes. And it ended up being a 108 minute uh, film in the end, because it was so much. Mm. And obviously we could not show all the work that has been done, but the most important, which we believe the most important projects that we run and we're still running is uh, evacuating the orphan children from Ukraine and taking care of them uh, in Romania for so long now. We have some groups that are there. That was difficult to get. You do a lot of things, and I think it's good to put that in context, but that's a program very close uh, uh, that's especially inspiring uh, to people and to you, obviously, to do it. Uh, you had inspiration to do it. Um, I guess the question is, how hard was it to do it? Because it seems to me dealing with orphans is very difficult based it on is. watching the war and it what's happened. It is difficult, and we all have to agree that you know dealing with those things is a very sensitive thing too. Yeah. Um, many organizations would not get involved just because of the sensitivity of the sensitivity, subject, yeah. sensitivity of sure. the subject. So yeah. they would be like, "Oh, I better," you know, because. Uh, and uh, <coughs> before I remember, before I signed uh, the documents to evacuate the first 75 orphans, they were between zero and five from the Odessa region. Odessa was at that time, and it still is, under fire, sure. yeah, heavily under fire. Mm. So we received this from the Ukrainian government, this, the, asking us to, to, to help with this matter. And, you know, we received a visit from their government uh, officials. They've seen the place. They check on us. They, they, they talk to the Romanian child protection, Romanian authorities. So we put them together at the table. We, we went through all, the, all these uh, legal things and everything. And then the document come down to my table and I had to sign it. And I remember my wife saying, you know, George, it's a huge responsibility. We have four kids and uh, look how, how difficult it is <laughs> with four. Imagine 75. So and you feel that responsibility. You, you don't want to just listen. You were so heavy close on the my, door on my shoulders. The, yeah, yeah. But more important than us, because you see, I, I talked with other organizations and they were like, George, you get into this, your reputation, man, you know, working with kids is difficult, difficult. Oh, yeah. it's sensitive, your reputation might be harmed. And I, I was thinking of all that. And then suddenly I thought, OK, if I will just be, you know, let's say a little bit afraid, you know, scared and not sign these documents, what would happen? And so I picture a little bit further down to my life. So let's say I, I care about my reputation mm -hmm. and I'm not signing it. Mm -hmm. Let's say in a couple of days, a rocket will hit that or fill an edge. Some of these kids, if not all, will die. Well, the whole How point of your, I will be yeah. able to live the rest of my life exactly. thinking that I could sign, but yeah. I was so coward yeah. not to sign it because, yeah. you see, our reputation is so important. No, it's not important. When no, it's a death and life situation, yeah, the exactly. life of these children matter most than my reputation. I, they, can, they can do whatever they want. Yeah. I know I've done the right thing, going in there, yeah. save these children, bring them to the safe place. And, and, well, doing and, the right thing has been to the heart of why you started Fight for Freedom, doing the right thing, which goes back to that transformational moment that we're going to yeah. talk about in the second half after the break. Um, but also, what kind of cowardice would it be if you worried about your reputation rather than taking care of these children uh, you, if you can do it? You, you, know? you, you, will be, you will be shocked to find out that so many people are worried more about the reputation of themselves. I know, I know they are, but I, I'm talking about you in your case yeah. with your specific inspiration. But, but that was you know? not the case because that was, you know, I, could, I, couldn't, I couldn't take the thought of something bad happening to these kids and me thinking of myself, how selfish that is to think of, of yourself when you have 75. I'm talking about one, two, even one. Mm. It's, it's important enough to leave everything behind and everything beside and get in there. And doesn't matter what yeah. happens, right? But yeah. by God's grace, we have the ability to, to communicate to the Ukrainian government to, you know, which, which we do greatly. By, by the way, they, 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 you know, they respond very fast and we work so well together. <coughs> and they also send, because one of the things that we said, we said we, we don't have the expertise and experience to work with 75 infants. We need staff. We need people to come to work with them. Because mm -hmm. in the first place, they want to just 
give us the children without without any staff support. So we said, no, it, it can't it can't happen. You but know, you found the help. We found the help with the Ukrainian government. Yeah. We said, okay, we're going to send the stuff with them. So you have to evacuate the stuff also. So there 75 yeah. orphans plus 60 members of staff, which means doctors, nurses, caretakers wow. that are with us ever since. So they together with the same stuff that they grow up with, which is great. You know, we have a Fantastic. great facility. Uh, we, we invest so much. It's everything brand new. The, the furniture, I remember we put, uh, I think we, we put like $70,000 in IKEA furniture for all the kids, all brand new, like new things, new. Shout out to IKEA. Uh, <laughs> did, sorry, they give you, did they give you a break no, the price? No, not at all. So they should have. Yeah, just no, cut no, that. Forget that then. We <laughs> yeah. take that back. We got to go to a break. Do uh, I would say don't buy IKEA, but be uh, be harsh when you're in IKEA shopping, <laughs> and uh, think of George. Okay, we'll be right back after this short break. Buy all these products uh, because they keep us on the air, and we like to stay on the air. Thank you for watching. See you in a minute. Everybody and welcome back. We're sitting with George Ignat, who is the uh, protagonist, the main character of the recent documentary, The Crossing, Consequences of the Truth. It's an interesting title. Um, and now we might as well get to that. We've talked about what the film is about. It's about you, your personal journey, uh, and a particular moment of transformation, yes. which led to you uh, finding there was no way forward but by telling the truth, the truth. in a yeah. particular situation, which then led to the part of the film uh, when your fight for freedom, as your organization is called, led to you uh, saving orphans from Ukraine and delivering over a million seven-day food packages yes. uh, since the war began, which alone is an amazing thing. Um, what are the consequences of the truth. Tell us the story of how uh, you arrived at that point, whether you had no choice, and tell us about your, the moment of conversion or transformation that led to that realization, that the truth was the only way out. So I actually had uh, a choice. Um, and we do, you know, and in, in the, the consequences of our choices are literally what we live every day, right? That's right. So, <laughs> So besides professional sport, beside the wrestling career, MMA career, sambo career, and so on, beside the, you know, I would say good things that I've done for my country and uh, and all that, I also uh, took very poor decisions. Of course, decisions that I regret, decisions that, you know, is you, they're, they're not like you know I'm proud of. I'm in fact ashamed, like I said in the movie, because that's that's what I feel. But there were decisions that eventually lead me to spend time in prison. I have to go and pay for them and be far from my kids and far. It's very interesting. So you went to prison. Yeah. I went to prison myself, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's very interesting because, um, you know, the time between I, I've done these stupid things, when I was very young in the rebellious, and the time that I have to go and pay for them, it was a long time, 11 years. By the time that I had to go to pay, I was already a settled, changed man with a wife, kids, a business, and a ministry running, right? A Christian, born again Christian, come to Christ, my life was settled. And then I had to, you know, the authorities knock on my door and said, you have to pay for those things. So imagine how inconvenient is that to leave home, you know, your wife, your kids, everything behind and go there and pay. But I- How old were you when you did these things? How old were you I was, when you I had to I was around pay 20 years old and I had yeah. to go in that's prison I when I was 30. Yeah, that's what I thought from the film. You were about 20. Yeah. and I Because it interrupted your Greco-Roman career yes, and, your, and yes. your coach was very disappointed. Very oh my God. Yeah. You could see yeah. it in his face. Yeah. He's still disappointed. He is. He, he is. saw you as a great potential he is. great and, world and champion. I think the potential was there and yeah. I think I missed great things in my sports career based on my poor decisions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my message out there for the youth, especially for the young people, who they chasing a dream is to chase if it's a good dream, 
to chase that dream okay. alone and then, then, then stop being distracted by other things. Because I see this generation now, they, they all want to make money overnight. They want, want to be famous. They want, and they want that to happen now. Yeah, you ask people, they don't understand. What, is your, what is your goal in life? Oh, I want to be famous. It's like, yeah, but you got to work for, the, for that yeah, in the old yeah, days. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You couldn't just that doesn't drop from the skies. No, you couldn't start a YouTube channel. You had to work your way through many editors and different Lots things. Lots of work. Anything, yeah. anything uh, that will lead to great success, it has to come to work. Yeah. But those young generation, you know, they want everything to happen. I was like that just 15 years, 20 years ago, you know. I, oh, 20 years, man. It's, I can't believe I'm, I'm, I'm so old. No, <laughs> no, these, <laughs> you're fine. preaching to the crowd on that <laughs> yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, that's, yeah. that's the message out there. Follow your dream and take good and uh, and uh, and smart decisions. Yeah. So how how would that can happen? You know, for me now, for example, being a Christian, uh, I wasn't always like that. I wasn't thinking like that. I was not reading the Bible. I was not you know living the life of a young wrestler champion, could take anyone on the ground in the seconds. Uh, also making money from different yeah, because you're, ways. You're physically still a very strong guy. You're a big guy. You're built for wrestling. I mean, yeah. if I, when I saw you, before the film started, I saw you there and I said, this guy looks like a wrestler yeah, yeah. or I an think, MMA the, guy the, yeah, or something. The, the, yeah. the, 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 the yeah. genetics are, are there. You yeah. know? But so, so my life was not only about you know, sports and medals and results and, and sure. great work, also about poor decisions, stupid decisions, making mistakes. And I think, you know, what pretty you much... What attracted it, you to that life? When I you think, had the sports career going, yeah. what attracted you? Because I talked to Mike Tyson. Yeah. And I interviewed Mike Tyson. It's still, you know, a high point yeah. of my interview career. He was yeah. such an interesting guy. You're only, people are only finding that out now. You're a very interesting guy. Um, and uh, why the film is worth seeing, folks. I really recommend it. Um, I hope it'll get on Netflix or something. Uh, so it'll be there for a long time for people around the world mm -hmm. to see. Um, but uh, what... Mike didn't go that way. He started out that way, and then he had the transformation uh, through his coach. Um, you were there, and you went the other way. What happened? I believe... I believe the the way we grew up in Romania after the 90s, after the communists fall down, okay. uh, you know, Romanians had hard time to understand what democracy was, especially, mm -hmm. you know, uh, politicians and stuff. So we had to go through some very, very difficult times. Being, you know, growing up poor, being national champion for a couple of times, part of the Olympic team, and working with broken shoes. At the same time. Uh, at the same time, eating, you know, very... So like, you were famous without any you surrounding... You support yourself, you know. Yeah. I'm not talking yeah. about taking your girlfriend out. No, that, that was out of the picture. You, you couldn't do that, you know. So, so in Romania at that point, I will talk about the years, you know, 2000. As an athlete, a strong guy, you know, either a boxing, rugby or player or wrestler, there was two options only at that time. Mm -hmm. I remember there was you either join the police forces, mm -hmm. you either join the opposite side. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of that went on in Poland too. So, I, yeah, I, I for, so. for a lot of the same reasons. Yeah. So yeah. I, I chose the other side because I told you know money will come much faster. It, it goes on everything. everywhere for a lot of the same reasons. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I went there. And it changed my life, not in a good way, you know. Uh, I've seen that money can be made, you know, easily and fast and overnight, and I enjoy it. And by, you know, by, by was, when, when I was 19, I was driving a BMW, black tinted windows, you know, like, like I always dreamed it. But like two years ago, I couldn't picture that, being the champion of Romania, being, you know, winning all this, I couldn't afford to take my girlfriend out. Yeah, but you didn't have the same approval when you were... When you were working for the mob, you didn't have the same approval uh, as you did when you were a wrestler. So, I mean, when you're a famous athlete, even if you don't have money, you're getting a lot of approval from people. You, you get, and it, there is one other thing. You see, if did you I miss would, that when you if, went the if, other way? If, no, because I was going both ways. I was trying to keep up with both you're trying ways. Trying to do both. Yes. Ah, Training okay. at the same time. I keep fighting. I keep winning right. the competitions. Uh, but I lost my focus from the sport. So what, what I'm trying to say now, if I look, if I go back, I will definitely have more patience with my career. The money were there. The good, you it know, like the comfort come. was yeah. not far. It would have come. It would have come. Yeah. You know, so it would have come. yes, just a yeah. little bit more patience. This is what I'm saying. Young. I'm saying to, very young. 
was Maybe so young. young. Yeah. And you weren't a guy who was at the university, right? Were you at the university? Or? Yes, yes. Well, what were you studying? Sports. You were Physical studying? education in sports. Yeah, university well, this is what uh, Klitschko studied. For yeah, example, and his yeah, brother, they yeah, both yeah. studied. Uh, I, I finished my university, yeah. obviously, uh, uh, you know, studying, studying all this. I never, I never become a coach or a teacher. So you could, you could that. Any, at any time, yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, life pushed me, took me to different, different directions. Okay. So, and it got worse and worse. Yes. Yeah. And then you know, it it, it has a, a point come to my life when I realized. Uh, nothing that I would that was ma I was making money, and when I'm talking money, I'm talking about you know quite serious, s quite serious, serious quite, wads of cash. Yes, in serious. Your hand. Yes, yeah. yes. Walking around then, with it, yeah. with it, and just mm. you know buying expensive stuff, driving a Range Rover, uh, having you know a, 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 an expensive whatever that somebody might think that would make, make me happy. Did it make you happy? No. Very Why not? Why not? Man, I, I can't. Why didn't having all those things, which most people, most kids would think. Or desire. Or people desire. Why didn't having all those things satisfy you? Because Why not? life is much more than this, Will. Okay. Life is much more than having the comfort. The comfort is there, and the next day, like it happened yeah. in Ukraine, they, they were living a perfectly normal life, and the next day you have to take whatever you can very fast, put it in a five minutes in your bag and run, so the comfort can disappear like this. Mm. But life is much more than that, and I believe life is about... Well, now you sound like Henry David Thoreau. <laughs> it was American philosopher, never mind, from the early 19th century. Go ahead. Yeah, so uh, you what said I pretty much now, the same with, thing. with my yeah. experience, it's, yeah. it's that life is much more than that. And I believe life, it's, it's, it's much more about the truth than the lies, because all those things were coming with a lot of lies, with a lot of cheating, with a lot of bad things behind, you know. But there is an alternative. Well, you you either get that yeah. or you either get to choose the truth and the consequences that come with well, the you're truth. you're hurting people when you're doing this other thing. You're... you're, you're actually hurting people. Yeah. Sometimes they're bad people, Sometimes, uh, but the there are but collateral yes. circumstances, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, obviously. Always. Yeah. So you're hurting people rather than helping people. Yeah. So you're doing negative things rather than positive things. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your, your goals are negative. Yeah, and they, they concentrate Rather on, myself, than positive. on myself right. and being very selfish, yeah. wanted me to ah. be the champion, me to have the nice car. So there's an element of me. narcissism in it. it, it yeah, you, you know, you call it. So, so, mm. so people are wondering today how from that person you become the person to share with so many, you yeah. know, and it was something that happened in between. Yeah. Because those things didn't come from here. Because all we have here in our flesh, like the Bible says, is nothing but you know selfish things. But then it must be something else. So, so along the way, to make the, the long story short, the long story short, yeah. along the way, I met Jesus Christ. And tell I us know about that moment. Because I know, that's I know very moving. The people, the people today would, would, would tell us that you know Jesus Christ, you know, is just a story, is a fairy tale. It happened 2,000 years ago. It's not. But I can tell you today here, and I'm very pleased and thankful if you will be able to share this with, with the Polish people, because it's a truth that changed my life. It'll be on television throughout the country <laughs> and in the United States. If people, praise, all they have to do praise, is find the satellite. God. And I'm here know, to say that you know channel. whatever you've seen in that movie happening. All the help, all the kids being rescued, all those people being fed for so long, and many more other things. And yeah. the reason that I'm alive today here is because Jesus Christ is not a fairy tale, but he's alive. He's a you know true that? living person because he's my best friend. You met him, but how? How I met him what in a very I met him in a very, very bad situation for myself. So I was in prison. Right for the first time, I was arrested. I was like not Daniel a Daniel in the lion's den. But I was not a Christian. But Daniel was there for the for the right thing. <laughs> I was for the wrong thing. Right. So it's a difference. So first time I got arrested, I was not what a, a Christian. What a great point. What a great point. But it is. <laughs> so I was in prison when I got arrested for the first time. Uh, the world that I built around me collapsed. Mm -hmm. I remember I was a well-known athlete. Not many people knew my dark side of life while doing, you know, all okay. this. Uh, yeah. So I, I yeah. was posing as an athlete, uh, like a successful athlete, a family, a familyist with family, with kids, uh, a good father, a good husband. I, I, I wouldn't say I was not trying to be a good husband and, and father, but I was far from what I was posing, what I want people to see in me, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was doing all this, but beside that, on the on the on the dark side of the things, I was I was making money, you know, committing different different offenses, right? 
that were against the law and so on. So Not just in Romania, eventually also in Great Britain. Great Britain, Australia, and so on. So internationally and so eventually I get caught. And everything that I built up to that age, you know, many years of hard work, taking risks, putting my health and my life in risk, everything like, you know, you build up, you know, and you build up a career and beside you build up everything and you believe, you know, you made it and, 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 and it's all yours and you can enjoy it. And then one morning I have the house surrounded by police. It was all people dressed in black, like many, many, many come down to take me to the, to the, to the prison. I was not a Christian. I haven't met Christ at that moment yet. So I'm going in that prison. They put me one floor under the ground. Where were you in prison? In, in Suchava, in my city. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. they arrest me there for offenses that happened in Australia. Okay. So that was the first case that well, I had. Well, let's be clear. You didn't murder anybody, no, but these no, were... No, no, Those, Those are economical, let's say, economical crimes, yeah. right? ATM yeah. scams, if you, if you want, mm -hmm. related with the ATM and, mm -hmm. uh, and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. So they arrested me, they put me in prison, and I was receiving the newspapers every day inside there. You know, they were bringing us the, you know, the news. Mm -hmm. Papers and all the newspapers, man, for days. It was such an important for like there was, you know, and the same people that were writing good things for about me for so long. Now they were writing like awful things, like. Mm -hmm. And I was looking and reading. Am I they, am I this person? Who am I? So I had a moment in my life where I didn't know who, who I was because I thought I'm somebody. Now I see people think, you know, saying I'm somebody else. Who, who really am I? I, have a, I don't have an identity. I'm the champion of Romania, yeah. I'm international champion, yeah. I'm this guy who won all these medals, all these trophies, yes. Mm. I'm also this guy who did all this. Yes, unfortunately, yes, I am. So who am I? I'm the nice guy, the athlete. I'm the bad guy, the villain. You know, who am I? I, I, I I was in a moment of my life when most of my friends, I would say 95%, because of this uh, life of mine and the arrest and everything being public and in the media, most of the people that I consider friends left. They me. went away? Yes, man. That was a shocking mm. thing to see for me because I was, I'm on a you were alone. very much uh, a friend, friendly person and I'm, yeah. I like socializing and I like people and, you know, I would help anyone and if you would, uh, you know, call me, you know, two o'clock in the morning, I would be there to help. Mm. I would be there to help. It doesn't matter what. And then people that I made, I, I made a lot of nice things for them, a lot of efforts to show them my friendship. They will just step away just because, you know, we can't be friends with George anymore. Look what the, the media says about him. This is shameful. So it was, so, you know, it hurt me so much because I really believed in, I don't know how other people are, but I really believed in friendship. Mm -hmm. I still do, but I'm more careful now with who I would choose as friends, right? I had close to me my family, my parents, my brothers, they were, they, they were, they were close to me. That was, that was... But in the midst of this, seeing people giving up on me, I, 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 was, I was under shock. And that was the moment when I, I remember uh, um, uh, start to seeking for a friend. I felt so betrayed in my heart. Like, yeah. how is that even possible? You know, so I remember people telling me about Jesus Christ. I thought I'm a Christian, just going to the church at Christmas and Easter, putting some candles there, you know, making the sign of cross and this no, and sure. that. Yeah. I said, I told myself I'm a Christian. I'm going, going through the motions. Yes, through the motions. But not but having the emotion. That's it. Yeah. And I, then, then I, I thought, you know, and we know it's much more than going to the church. It's a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. That's what it matters, because that's what changes someone so deeply that he never goes back to, the, to, to what he was before. This is what people don't understand. Education is very good. And I tell people working with ex-convicts. Yeah, that part was very compelling in the movie. And as I told you in a, in a conversation, my roommate in college did a lot of, of jailhouse, yeah. what we call jailhouse mem uh, uh, ministry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So those people there, yeah. like I was, I was one of them. I was in prison. I was just a number at some point. Yeah. They were calling me by, by my number, right? Yeah. So those people, you know, beside that they have no chance when they come back to the society. This is what we're trying to provide for them, yeah. to help them reintegrate and give them a chance. Those people will never change unless they meet Jesus Christ. This is my personal opinion. And anyone can say, yeah. Yeah, they won't change. And they, okay, that's what my friend says too. And he was a guy like you who was not into this at all and had a moment, as I told you, and became. This is another reason your story clicked with me, because you're very close to me, yeah, to this day. 
I'm goddaughter. Uh, I'm, uh, two of his daughters are my goddaughters, for oh, example. Beautiful. You know, so, um, but uh, did the fellow in the movie? There was one fellow who said, "No, I really, I'll do anything. I want to work with yeah. you. I'll do, give my whole life to you." Yeah. Did that work out? He's still in prison. We're waiting for him for his release. Whenever he's going to be released, he will eventually. There are hard chances that he will come to one of our centers mm -hmm. okay. because he has no 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 place to go. Yeah. So so going back to the conversion moment, I was in prison. Yes. I was I was suffering all this disappointment and betrayal from friends and even family members and people, mm. and I would you know I I felt in my heart very strongly I felt uh, that I want to talk to God I never did that before, but you know in that room we very small room with like eight people inside uh, there was no you, you could I couldn't have that privacy so I asked the guardian to take me to the shower rooms by myself because I want to take a shower mm -hmm. but I was I was willingly to talk to God not to take a shower so I remember Will I went there and I hung my towel on the on the wall and I opened up all three showers and you know as big as you see me I, I did not knee I just I just felt on the ground I just dropped I collapsed on the ground I think I stood there for an hour and I, I, I just, I cried out to, to, to God and I, I, I apologized to him. Obviously, I told him all about and I asked him to, to and I literally invite him. I said, and I remember this, I was saying this all the time and, you know, like repeatedly, repeatedly, like, you know, if you will give me a different direction, it's worth getting out of here and live. Otherwise, you can take my life now because I don't want to be that person that I was. I realized how delusional I was thinking that everything is about myself, thinking that everything is, you know, I'm, I'm the, the important person, I'm the person that I have to, to do all these things to have it satisfied. And it was not like that. Life is much yeah, more sure. than being a selfish person. Yeah. And I will tell people, if they will try to help others, that's when, you, when you're going to find the true happiness. This is why where I get my happiness today yeah. is by helping other people and have them being happy. And you know what? God is honoring. If it's a sincere heart doing that, you know what? He will take care of you to be happy too. People don't understand. They think if they give, they will lose. No, it's not true. As much as you give, as you have to much fight more. for your own freedom before you can fight for the freedom for others. Definitely. In other words... Uh, you have to be a free man to be yeah. able to help others yes. to be free. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and you were able can, to find that, yes. that strength. And yeah. free and free is not only from behind bars, yeah. which God, you know, made a miracle to get me out of prison way, you know, long before my time was was done. And I expressed that in the movie. And you know, that's he, right. Well, he, it's all uh, laid out beautifully in the film. Yeah. And and it's a sort of intricate story cut very yeah. well. So just yeah. going back to close down without yeah. without without shower thing. Yeah. You know, I prayed there. I cried out to God. I asked Him for a new life. I remember I stood up after like you know an hour, and I went back to the room, and I was smiling, and all the boys were like, "What happened? Any good news from the lawyer? Why 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 we were smiling?" And I was, man, I, I, I don't know, I, I, I believe I just, I just met God. That was my personal inside feeling because I felt his presence. I never felt that in my life and before. What did that feel like? That felt like a lot of joy. That felt like a lot of relief. That felt like a lot of freedom. I believe that was the moment that George Ignat became a free man. Mm -hmm. Even though after that I had spent many years in prison, not many, like three and a half years in prison, I have to spend to pay for my, my debts. Yeah. But I, I, that was the day to meet Christ. I believe the day that one person meets Christ is the day that he become a free man. It doesn't matter what he was before, what he's done. It doesn't matter if that, like in my case, I have to spend time in prison. I was in prison, but I was a free man in prison. Mm -hmm. You know, and Jesus Christ can free us. We might try to free ourselves from things that we believe are not good, but he's the only one who can give us the real freedom. So if you are, in, you know, having problems with drugs or alcohol, or any other problem, sin, whatever it is, name it, through Jesus Christ, you can reach the level of freedom that will enable you to free others. Okay, that's George Ignat. What a conversation. I hope you have enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed meeting George and also uh, 
having him on having him on the show. One of our most compelling guests ever. Um, his organization is called Fight for Freedom. We can find this on fightforfreedom.ro. Dot ro for yeah, Romania. Yeah, and yeah. you can find it on Facebook. We are becoming international now. We changed. We moved our headquarters to Vienna. It will be an international. In Vienna, you'll be. Yes, yeah. yes. Fight okay. for Freedom International with yeah. branches in um, in Ukraine, in Moldova, in Romania. So we see God expanding this work. So Fantastic. Just, yeah. Also known as George Ignat, also known as the Carpathian Bear, Carpathian Bear uh, yeah. by your coach, who yes. appears in the film. The film is called The Crossing. The Crossing. It's directed by Andy Didway. Didway. Yes. Andy yeah. Didway. And Producer Bullock. is Michael Bollock. Michael Bollock, yeah. who's done a lot in uh, American TV and films. And uh, it's a heck of a film. I'm, I know it's going to do well over time. The Crossing consequences of the truth and boy uh, it really lays it out for you folks it's a great film and uh, you're a great fella George praise God for that man thanks for coming in thank you so much for uh, inviting me yeah thank you're you for the Polish people thank you for the Warsaw Film Festival for yeah. having us here it's yeah. been a tremendous Stephen Loud Stefan Loudon his f festival uh, yeah. Yeah, with partners yes yeah. thank you so much yeah. for you know to put the Polish people and uh, having a tremendous experience listen it's the first time we have been in, in uh, myself I have been in such thing so it's it's, it's a great experience thank you so much Stephen and the Warsaw Film Festival and uh, to the Polish people and thank you Will for having me here you bet it's my pleasure entirely that's all we got for this week folks thank you for watching the show and see you next time